This story begins before I was born, far from my home in Jerusalem, in the land of Israel, the northern kingdom. It begins with Queen Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab, the most evil queen in Israel's history. Queen Jezebel was speaking to her daughter Athaliah, preparing the way for the most dangerous time in the history of Judah. Eh, little Athaliah, I have good news. You have been pledged to marry Jehoram, the son of King Jehoshaphat. Jehoram is just about your age. His father, King Jehoshaphat, is king of Judah. Judah? I thought Judah was the enemy. Of course they're the enemy, little one. Why? Because their king is not from your grandfather, King Omri. Is King Jehoshaphat bad? He is very bad, baby. Why? Because he is a descendant of King David. Was King David bad? Yes, Athaliah. King David was very bad. Why? Because Yahweh, the false god of Judah, made a promise. David's descendant would rule on King David's throne forever and ever. Why? It's all a part of the promise. Their prophets say that in the beginning, when their god Yahweh created everything, sin came into the world, and death came because of that sin. But their god Yahweh made a promise. A descendant would come from Eve's descendant and would crush Satan's head and set all humans free from sin and death. Judah's scriptures teach that the man who will do this comes from David. Mama? Is that promise true? Of course not, baby. The promise is totally false. All of the promises of Yahweh are false. So, is my husband Jehoram going to crush Satan's head? Of course not, baby. Is my husband Jehoram going to rule in David's throne forever and ever? No, Athaliah. Why? Because we are going to stop him, that's why. No matter what it takes, we cannot let David's descendants live, no matter what it takes. That's right, Athaliah. You are going to end that promise. I am? You must plan for this, Athaliah, so that when you are queen, you can stop the promise. I'm going to be a queen like you? Will I be a bad queen or a good queen? If you stop Yahweh's promise, you will be the best queen. Then I am going to kill every descendant of that evil King David. Right, Mama? Good girl. Kill them all. Every single one. Thirty-five years passed. Athaliah grew up and married Jehoram. Athaliah and Jehoram had a son, and they named him Azariah. Jehoram became king when he was thirty-two years old, making Athaliah his queen. Sometime after Jehoram became king, he murdered all six of his brothers. That made Jehoram the only possible descendant of David. I always thought that Athaliah talked him into it, but that was just a guess. When Jehoram turned 40, he died, and his son Azariah became king. Azariah was 22 years old. King Jehoram was my father, but Athaliah was not my mother. So Azariah was my half-brother. My name is Jehoshaphat. May I enter, your majesty? Sure, sister. You don't have to ask. No, son. I think it's better that your half-sister treats you like the king you are. Jehoshaphat is a princess, mother. Half-sister, whole sister, she's still my sister. But not my daughter, son. And she needs to remember that. Sure, mother. So, sister, what brings you here? I was visiting all of your beautiful children, my lovely little nephews. There are a lot of them, I know. I have ten wives, you know. Against my wishes. Mother, I need to make sure I have plenty of descendants. Against my wishes. Grandfather wanted me to preserve the line of the promise. Yes, brother. More than anything else, we must pass on the promise until the final descendant comes. The promise! What nonsense! God made that promise to Eve, 
and then to Noah, and then to Abraham, from generation to generation, until it came to King David. I know, sister. And you, dear brother, were the only direct descendant from King David until now. That's right, sister. And my lovely wives have given me lots of babies, lots of direct descendants. How many descendants, Azariah? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to keep track. You don't know? You should find out, my dear son. Why? Well, uh, because of the promise, of course. Mother, any one of those boys could be the final descendant who rules on David's throne forever. Any one of them, I see. You just visited the nursery girl. Did you count them, Majesty? May I leave? Please go. Fifteen boys. There are fifteen boys. But for some reason, I will never tell her that. Your Majesty, you called for me? Yes, girl. Your brother is not in Jerusalem right now. He is visiting my brother Joram, who is now king of the northern kingdom of Israel. Yes, I know, Your Majesty. I thought that while my son was gone, we could have a nice little talk together about your precious promise. The promise, yes. From this point until you die, you must never mention this so-called promise to anyone ever again. Including your son, Azariah? Yes, especially my son, Azariah. But the promise is the most important part of our entire religion with Yahweh. As you know, I don't believe in your Yahweh. I do not want you poisoning the minds of Azariah's children either when they get old enough to understand. They are your grandchildren, your majesty. Let's get something clear, girl. I never wanted Azariah to father these children, and I refuse to call them my own but they are your grandchildren, Queen Athelite. Unfortunately, and any one of them could become the promised descendant of even Abraham and David. That is the last time you will ever speak those words. Do you hear? No more discussion about the promise. Queen Nathaliah, I have terrible news. Tell me, your son Azariah was visiting your brother Joram in Israel when one of Joram's generals murdered all your family. Is my mother still alive? No, your majesty, murdered all of my family. May God avenge me, my brothers and all their sons. All dead. What about my brother, King Azariah? I am sorry for your loss, but King Azariah is dead, Princess Jehosheba. My beloved brother, dead. May Yahweh have mercy on us. Jehoshaba, get out of here. I have business to take care of. My poor brother. Messenger, go find my high priest, Matan. Tell him to come to me immediately. Yes, your majesty. No, wait. Have him come to the palace nursery with five or six priests of Baal who he knows are completely loyal to me. The nursery, your majesty? Yes, the nursery. It's time for me to fulfill a promise I made to my mother when I was just a little girl. And messenger. Yes, your majesty. Make sure they bring knives. Nurse, how many babies are here? There are 15 babies. I count them every hour. Which one looks the most like my brother, King Azariah? I guess Jehoash, that baby over there. He looks just like the king. Okay, I will grab Jehoash. Nurse, you grab the crib. The crib? What's going on, princess? Just do as I say. There's no time to explain. Yes, princess. Now, where is the safest room nearby where we can hide for the next 10 hours? A, a room with a door we can close. I, I don't understand. Woman, there's no time. Answer me. Uh, uh, the room where we keep all the bedding and blankets. That's safe. We can close the door there. Come on, then. Let's get out of here while there's still time. Nurse, no matter what you hear, you must be completely quiet. We need to keep this baby quiet. His life depends on it. Are the babies in danger? We are all in danger. We are all in danger. Matan, high priest. My son, King Azariah, is dead. 
and my mother and all of my brothers have been murdered. My condolences, your majesty. We will condole later. Do you know what we have to do at this moment? The promise? Correct. The promise. It's time to put that foul promise to death forever. So, you know what to do. Of course I do, your majesty. It shall be done. Beasts, are you ready to end the line of King David? Get your knives ready. They are all dead? All dead, my queen. We have defeated Yahweh. Yes, we have finally defeated Yahweh. They've murdered my babies. Oh, my precious babies. Only one survived because of you, princess. Not because of me, but because of Yahweh. They thought they could defeat Yahweh's promises. But no one in heaven or on earth can do that. Our God saved this little baby for the promise. We are in so much danger here, princess. I know, but we can't leave until it's completely dark. And then, where will we go? Where will we be safe? The temple, of course. My husband, Jehoiada, is the high priest. We'll hide the baby there until he is old enough to be revealed as the true ruler of Judah. Little Jehoash stayed in the temple for the next six years. My husband and I devoted ourselves to teach Jehoash from God's law even before he could speak. Every moment of every day, we worried that someone might discover our secret. What would we do if Baal's priests found little Jehoash hiding in our temple rooms? My husband Jehoiada, the high priest, appointed faithful Levites to pray throughout the day and night for Yahweh to protect our little king. All of the temple priests carried long knives beneath their robes, just in case. But six long years passed and no one learned of our secret. Well, wife, it's time to reveal King Jehoash to the world. But husband, Little Jehoash is only six years old. I will guide him, Jehosheba. Don't worry. Is it safe? We have guards with swords surrounding us. No one will harm us. The little Jehoash be safe, Athaliah. God will protect him. He will be safe. But what if the people want Athaliah as their queen? They do not want Athaliah. She is not a descendant of David. And our people, for all their sinfulness, still believe that promise, Jehosheba. They still long for the Messiah to come. The Messiah cannot come through Athaliah, and they know that. They are ready for a return to a descendant of David sitting on the throne. I promise you. People of Judah, hear me. Six years ago, Queen Athaliah thought she had murdered all of the sons of King Azariah. She thought she could defeat Yahweh's promise, but she was wrong. We rescued one baby, little Jehoash from the nursery. We have been caring for Jehoash for over six years, teaching him the word of God and keeping him safe. People of Judah, I present to you your new ruler, King Jehoash, descendant of David and rightful heir to the throne. What's happening here? 
Who is this child? My brother had 15 children, Athaliah. You only killed 14. You missed one, the promised descendant of David. How dare you talk to me that way? Guards, arrest her. No one is going to listen, Athaliah. Jehoash is king now. Your rule is finished. Soldiers, obey me. No one's going to obey you, Athaliah. You are finished. Treason! Treason! Arrest her for the murders of the sons of Azariah and for many other crimes. The high priest Jehoiada made King Jehoash and the people enter into a covenant with the Lord that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people. Then the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and the idols and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altar. Jehoiada put guards on duty at the temple. Then he, the officers, the royal bodyguard, and the palace guards escorted the king from the temple to the palace, followed by all the people. Jehoash entered by the guard gate and took his place on the throne. All the people were filled with happiness and the city was quiet now that Athaliah had been killed in the palace. Jehoash became king of Judah at the age of seven. Second Kings 12, 1 and 2. In the seventh year of the reign of King Jehu of Israel, Jehoash became king of Judah, and he ruled in Jerusalem for 40 years. His mother was Zibiah from the city of Beersheba. Throughout his life he did what pleased the Lord because Jehoiada the priest instructed.